Now, one thing, because mm-hmm. it's obviously what everybody's talking about in wrestling this week, and, and that's the the perhaps whatever of what could it be? Daniel yeah. Bryan. <laughs> I that's, mean, what, like, that's what I thought you were going, but I wasn't sure. I was like, maybe kind of, maybe you're gonna surprise <laughs> this one. But yeah, no, yeah, we've heard we heard the ramblings, absolutely. So, so in theory, uh-huh. if they're if they're coming if they're coming in, one if uh-huh. not both, and probably both. I mean, okay. the matches with, with you know, for, from your standpoint, those matches are the obvious matches. You're the top guy, and even even if you're if, whether you're champion or not champion, whenever they, whenever these guys show up, if they show up. You know, whatever the story is, the bottom line is is that you and and Dan, Brian Danielson is like a dream match to a lot, a lot of wrestling fans, and and you and Punk would be in a very different way, but it's still, you know, it's still one of those matches where you know five years ago and everything, it's like something or you know where people will go, oh my God, you know, it's one of those matches that it will never happen. Wouldn't it be great? But it will never happen. And now right. there's, you know. I mean, it, it's it's funny because of all the matches, if, if that match is to happen, the Danielson match or the mm-hmm. Punk match, I feel like it's in some ways like the first Jericho match at the Tokyo Dome, where it's it's gonna cause, and maybe the maybe the the first Moxley match I think had some of this too. Um, but oh, that's true. Yeah, those, it really did. Yeah, yeah, but it's one of those things where Ooh, it's buzz. It, yeah, it's it's like yeah, the, the buzz, but just the the dream match thing, you know, like you watch yeah. these guys for years and years, you never thought they would ever cross paths, and now whatever. I mean, is that like from your standpoint, if this stuff is to mm-hmm. happen, either or both? I mean, what are your kind of thoughts on those two guys? I mean, like you said, they're two very different athletes, two very different performers. Um, I respect both in very well similar, but also different ways. I mean. Danielson, um, I still call him Brian Danielson, Daniel Bryan. Um, I, I am always, I always knew that he was incredibly intelligent. He is ridiculously smart, especially as it relates to professional wrestling. And for him to kind of create a movement, an actual legitimate movement with the yes movement and all that, you know, for him to come up with that, he created it. Um, and I, there's no, absolutely no way. And you could find written documented evidence saying that, Oh, we always plan to have you have your WrestleMania moment, be the champion. I wouldn't believe it. Even if I saw it in front of my face, I don't think that was ever the plan, but he made it the plan because he's just that smart. Right. Right. Oh, absolutely. From his standpoint. Yes. It was never the plan. He made it. Yeah. No, there's no way it was, but he was able to kind of turn everything around and, and emerge as a mega star because he is smart enough in a, in a wrestling sense, in a business sense. Uh, and just like in ROH, how he was able to have those fans in the palm of his hand, he's able to have the entire WWE universe in the palm of his hand with one word. Um, no matter, and really the only other person I can think of that did that was, was maybe Austin was the what? You know what I mean? There's, there's really no nobody else I can think of who had that much power with one word. And, um, you know, wrestling ability, of course, it's second to none. One of the uh, most crisp, one of the uh, most technically sound athletes to ever step foot in the ring, especially in the current age. And, um, you know, CM Punk, a, a guy who's just has, again, he probably has a different line of thinking than than your current day performer, the average performer. Um, and he has this incredible reputation, um, of some of the, he has, and he has fans to this day who would fall into the ends of the earth, a very dedicated fan base. And that fan base believes that he is the best in the world and will be the best until the end of time. And if you're able to have people like that, follow your career so passionately, you probably have something very special about you. And it just goes to show you that the way that he prevent, presented himself and the way that he spoke about himself, the way that he spoke to his opponents, how he performed in the ring, um, entrance music, um, his image, it was all very meticulous and he was very intelligent about how we, how we went about it. Um, two extremely intelligent people who found a way to sort of, I don't want to say cheat the system, but it was, it was a system that was not created for them there. And they're able to, 
break every ceiling that was placed in front of them and emerge as an actual legend that will never be forgotten. Um, so it's, it's cool for me to think that I, I'm going to be able to get in the ring with these two possibly, but I think, you know, because they were so prominent in the WWE and a lot of that is featured with segments, angles, character work, you know, for me, as exciting as the wrestling part is, the ability to tell a story is more exciting for me. Hey, if you're a big fan of Wrestling Observer Radio, we got 12,000 episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, WrestlingObserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week, you can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work, working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 audio shows at your fingertips.